Now we turn to the controversy surrounding the execution of Nathaniel Woods. Woods was convicted in the shooting death of three police officers and injuring a fourth back in 2004 while they were executing a warrant. But Woods never actually shot at the officers. It was a man named Kerry Spencer who was with him when police arrived. That's what he said. Spencer even confessed to being the sole gunman who killed the officers. Ultimately, Woods was convicted on four capital murder charges. He tried appealing his conviction and argued that he had been given inadequate representation. His appeal was denied by both the Alabama Supreme Court and the Supreme Court of the United States. High-profile individuals from the son of Martin Luther King Jr. to director Ava DuVernay to Kim Kardashian West all tweeted against Woods' execution. But the governor of Alabama released a statement doubling down, saying, This is not a decision that I take lightly, but I firmly believe in the rule of law and that justice must be served. Joining me now to discuss the complexities of this case as well as uh, the role that the Supreme Court played is criminal law professor Echo Yanka. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we see convictions and appeals turned down all the time. What makes this case particularly unique? I think this case was difficult for everybody because um, there's no question uh, on anybody's mind, the prosecutor or the defense, that Woods was not the person who shot these police officers. Uh, there's testimony that, uh, that he didn't do it. There's confessions, as you pointed out, by the actual shooter that he was not the one to do it. But on top of that, the case was just riven with really problematic evidence. Two of the witnesses recanted and said they were pressured by the prosecution to do it. There were even rumors of police corruption, that the police were not there just to serve a warrant, but that they were part of uh, unlawful and corrupt bribery. So there was so much doubt in this case that many people thought the finality of the death sentence just had to be forestalled so we could get to the bottom of it. And I'm really kind of scratching my head. I mean, initially the Supreme Court had decided uh, to stay the execution, then reverse that right away. Why and how unusual is something like this? It was very strange. The Supreme Court gave a stay that ended up being for a little more than four hours. Um, to be sure, the court's stay was on a very technical issue. Woods was not told um, that he, well, Woods was given a choice between two different ways of dying, essentially, two different chemical protocols, one of which the state of Alabama doesn't yet have a full protocol. So had he chosen that one, the state would have had to wait. It would have bought him more time to have his case appealed. So this is part of the overall question of how he was failed at every point by his counsel. Um, it really was the fact that he didn't choose a protocol is why he's no longer here. But why did they then reverse? I think on that technical issue, the case was never Never going to be reversed. Indeed, um, the sort of the more substantive stay that asked the court to look at the substantive issues of lack of effective counsel, as as well as uh, conflicts of evidence, was never reviewed by the court. And is this really unprecedented, or is this something that the Supreme Court does? Kind of waffle. Well, there is a there's a larger fight in which this is embedded that where the Supreme Court members of the Supreme Court, what we might think of as the conservative members of the Supreme Court, are more interested in staying the court's hand in in having fewer. Uh, it's a complex set, set of words. Fewer stays, fewer injunctions, fewer interferences with lower courts, right. and so we see this as part of a larger trend of fights. Um, so I'm not surprised that on this technical issue, the court was not going to reverse his or was not going to stay his execution. Nathaniel Woods' family released a statement saying the fight is far from over. Nathaniel is an innocent man, and that will always be the truth. We are not giving up. What else can be done at this point? Well you know, it is a stunning case because, of course, um, he's now, not only are three police officers dead, but Nathaniel Woods is no longer with us. But what is really true is that even if his life is over, his story is not over. Um, there are just countless organizations and countless families who fight every year in order to have their loved one's full story come out, in order to be able to proclaim to the world that this person who is executed by the state is ultimately innocent. Um, and we see that. Uh, sometimes spanning over decades. I think on top of that, of course, their family surely cares that Nathaniel Wood's life was not in the end in vain, that the next person who doesn't get counsel who tells them what they're facing, what the capital charge might be, um, that, for example, Alabama remains the only state in the nation where you can be executed without a unanimous vote of a jury, that there's not another Nathaniel Woods who loses their life because they don't have the right legal counsel. And so for that, I'm sure the family uh, will always want to stand. All right, Mr. Yonka, thank you so much for explaining that to us. We appreciate it. Thank you.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.